He was not well known to the public until now. Mustafa Adib has been chosen to form Lebanon's next government. The former ambassador to Germany is promising change at a time of deep crisis. We will choose a ministerial team with expertise and competency. We'll also carry out quick reforms that will put the country on the path to recovery and end the dangerous financial, economic and social bleeding. Mustafa Adib got the majority of votes during parliamentary consultations. The post is reserved for a Sunni Muslim in the country's sectarian-based governing system. That is why support from former Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri, who heads the largest Sunni bloc, was essential to maintain national unity. Factions from a divided political landscape came together before the arrival of French President Emmanuel Macron. The country needs to embrace the initiative of President Macron because the French president is working with the international community to lift Lebanon from underneath the rubble. Macron returns to Beirut less than a month after visiting the Lebanese capital two days after the devastating port explosion. He has become a main power broker in the political crisis, leading efforts to persuade politicians to fight state corruption and push through reforms needed for an international monetary fund bailout plan. There is also support, uh, foreign support, outside support for the premiership of Dr. Adi by France. Uh, uh, to one degree or another by the United States, because clearly the United States has given uh, a, a, or has given a leeway for France to undertake a major role for the next period in, in Lebanon. Lebanon needs billions of dollars to rebuild what was destroyed in the port blast and billions more to revive an economy that has been run to the ground. Adib, unlike his predecessor Hassan Jeb, who resigned in the aftermath of the August 4 explosion, has the support from the majority of political forces. But like Jeb, Adib could be held hostage by a political establishment that has been reluctant to carry out state reforms that could threaten their interests. But this time, they may have little choice. The state is close to collapse, and the international community says there won't be blank checks. In the words of the new prime minister, Lebanon doesn't have time, and this may be its last opportunity to save itself. Zena Khudr Al Jazeera, Beirut. Well, let's now speak to Rami Khoury. He is a journalism professor at the American University of Beirut and also a senior fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School. He joins us now from New York. Rami, Mustafa Adib, up until now, he's not exactly been a household name in Lebanon. What kind of a man is he and why him? Well, he's prime minister because he's not very well known at all, and we don't know what kind of a man he is, other than that he's a very uh, distinguished, uh, cultured, uh, decent fellow who has served uh, in various public service capacities um, in uh, uh, universities and a, a military think tank at one point in Lebanon. Uh, he served with the prime minister, Najib Mehati, at one point. Um, and um, he, he doesn't have a public real record Mm. Um, uh, of any great uh, attraction. Uh, so that's why he was appointed, because he's mm. a clean slate, and, and the people who appointed him, which is the four Sunni prime ministers, recent prime ministers, all millionaires, thought that um, um, he would be the one who could quell the uh, popular uprising and uh, make some changes and get the country back on track. That's a bit of a gamble, and the public uh, doesn't really doesn't really have a lot of faith in this kind of decision-making. That's why they've been out on the street for a year protesting, because they don't want decisions like this made in closed doors between a few mm. millionaire men. They want the, the sovereignty to be vested in the citizenry. Uh, and we're going to probably see a lot of contestation to this appointment until the new prime minister shows what it is he's actually going to do. I did want to ask you about that, Rami, because before the coronavirus pandemic, before the port explosion, I mean, it does feel like a very long time ago, as you say, there were these very vocal, enormous protests demanding the reform of the whole, the entire political system. And Emmanuel Macron, on his way to Lebanon shortly, he's also called for pretty much the same. And this clearly isn't that. Is he going to be able to push reforms through? You know, we just don't know, because the critical elements, uh, which are three, what is Hezbollah's position? What's the position of the popular uprising in the streets, which is probably a majority of the citizens? And what kind of government will he name with what kind of policies? And what mandate will they get from 
parliament. Those three are the critical elements that will define whether this new prime minister is a success or the government can make the kind of changes that the Lebanese desperately need and that the international community wants in order to provide tens of billions of dollars of aid and investment. Mm. Uh, and those are totally unknown. And, and this is one of the reasons, again, why there's millions of people who've been in and out of the streets demonstrating, because they don't want to live in a world where their fate is decided by a few men in, in, in a closed room every few years while the country continues to collapse economically, environmentally, politically, and socially. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, and I think any reasonable person has to feel that, well, let's see what this new fellow is all about mm. and what kind of government does he name. Uh, the chances are not zero that he will succeed, but they're not very high either, given the tradition of prime ministers being named in closed rooms uh, without any popular... Uh, uh, a participation. Mm, well, he certainly has lots of challenges ahead. Rami Khoury there, always great to speak to you here on Al Jazeera. Thanks for being with us again.